So in this video, I'm going to be using Google Earth Engine to search and find Landsat imagery. And just for you uh, who don't know who Landsat is, Landsat is a NASA program that was launched uh, to observe the to do Earth observations. And there was Landsat one, two, three, and now there's up to Landsat eight. So they've been continually replacing the satellites over time. So it has the longest continuous observation of the Earth's surface. And so it's a really great um, tool to be having. And uh, Google Earth Engine already has all the Landsat imagery uh, available on um, on this cloud. And also um, it has the newest stuff, Landsat 8, and that's what we're going to want to use um, today. And so for the first thing that we want to do is we're going to want to search a place because um, we're going to want to use that to limit what we look at, to filter it by location. So I'm going to look up Gainesville, Florida, where the University of Florida is. And so I can just use that search bar and I bring it up there. Then with the uh, geometry tools, that's what this is over here. You have the pan tool and of course you have this uh, dot, add a marker, draw a line, draw a shape. I'm going to put in a point. And so let's put a point in for uh, Gainesville. And so you can see here how this point now got put into this um, upper information here. And already kind of put it into as a variable just called um, geometry. Um, <clears throat> I don't really like the fact that it's called um, geometry, so I'm going to uh, rename it, and I'm going to rename it to points, just because I'd rather use my own my own naming. Um, so the, now the variable is called point, and so now points hanging out uh, there at Gainesville, and uh, you can see how it's longitude latitude and it's stored here, um, and so. Uh, moving along, then I want to start searching for uh, Landsat imagery. And so, again, with the search bar, what's cool about it is I can search places or data sets. So I'm going to search the um, Landsat. And I'm going to want to look for Landsat 8 raw. And it's still not showing up. I want to see it with it ortho -rect rectified. And so here's Landsat 8 seen ortho rectified and that's going to be a good one to do if I click on it you can get some information about it it tells me about the bands different band numbers I'm using the data av av availability that's there um, and also I have this nice import button here that I can click on um, besides that I can always look at this image collection ID and use that to code in it myself but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click import and so that's going to bring in the uh, image collection. And so you can see here now I have this next variable called image collection. And um, I don't want to call it the default stuff, of course. So I'm going to call it Landsat. And that's going to make it a little bit easier for me later on um, with my variable. And so now I have two variables, a point and a Landsat. And so the first thing I want to do is that I want to start setting up filters. So in this workflow, flow, what you do is that you filter, you bring in the image collection. That's going to bring in every single Landsat 8 image ever done. But then you have to start filtering it out to reduce what you show on the screen. And so, you know, you eventually want to reduce it to geographic location, what we see at Gainesville. Um, but then we also want to reduce it by um, a temporal period. And then we can also use um, some metadata searching to reduce it by the amount of cloud coverage that we're seeing as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Landsat and I'm going to cast it first as an image. And so I'm going to declare a variable called image. And then I'm going to use the um, Earth Engine method of casting an image by doing double E uh, dot IMG. And then I'm going to type in Landsat. That's my variable. But then I want to go ahead and I want to filter that. So I'm going to put dot and then I'm going to filter by date. And so I'm going to want to filter by date. And so I'm going to put here filter date. And then within the filter date, I can put in um, date. But it has to be in a format like this, uh, 2014 0101. And then a comma. And so it's going to be a start date and an end date. 2014 12-31 and so I want to look for anything that's that took place in the year 2014 that's the interesting thing that I have here 
And then the next thing I want to filter for is I want to filter by um, geography. So I'm going to put in here filter bounds. And then from that, I want to put the, um, oh, I just spell that right, filter uh, bounds. And then I want to put in there the point that I have. And so that's going to bring in that point variable that I declared earlier. And then I want to um, sort it, sort all the images that come out by cloud cover. And the way that that's, it's pulling from the metadata there. And so I should actually put that all capitalized. Um, cloud and cover. And then I want to find the one I want to bring up the first one that shows up because that's so what it's going to do basically is going to take all the images that are found from my point at this date range filtered by cloud cover so the least one that's going to be the top and then the very first one that's what I want to have show up on the um, on the map later on um, if I wanted I can go in here and be a little bit um, cleaner about this and add in some um, things like uh, uh, comments and so forth but um, basically you can see what I'm doing here is that I'm taking the image then I'm filtering by date then I'm filtering by location then I'm filtering then I'm sorting by lo cloud location and I'm displaying the very first one I'm gonna go ahead and hit run make sure that everything compiles correctly and so it did um, how do I know it worked well I haven't printed anything to screen so or showed anything in the map so I don't really know what happened so Let's go ahead and print something to the um, to the console, so this way we can see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, print the image to the console, and then there I'm gonna say um, print, and uh, I'm gonna say here uh, a Landsat scene. And then I want to print the image that I just declared. And so that should do that. And so if I hit run now, you can see here that it put the Anlandsat scene right over here. And you can see here all the information. And so I can see all I have the different 12 bands and so forth. So I, I'm interacting with the Landsat image right now. Uh, that's, so that's, that's pretty cool. But still, printing to console is not the same as seeing it on a map. So I'm going to want to add this image to a map. But the problem is, is that we have so many different bands and so many different informations. And so one thing that we're going to want to do is that we're going to want to um, define um, some visualization um, uh, variables, uh, parameters. And that's going to be things that we're going to put into the JavaScript uh, for later on and we're going to use a javascript dictionary to do this and so i'm going to go ahead and declare a variable as um, true color because i'm going to go ahead and, and make a true color image even though it's not truly true color but it does take the red green and blue and display it on on the um, map in that different ways and so um, in the variable of true color i'm going to go ahead and i want to put in that i want to use bands and <clears throat> i can see from the metadata um, that band four and um, band four and uh, band three and band two are going to be uh, red, green, and blue. And so that's what we're putting in here. And our screen uses red, green, and blue. And so if we take those three bands and define them as red, green, and blue, that can help us out a lot on scene. And I'm going to go ahead and set a minimum and a maximum. These numbers, you can fine tune them um, to get a better, better view. Um, and you can experiment with that in the, um, in the table. Uh, and then if you do experiment with that, then what you can do is that you can uh, re redefine those variables afterwards um, in the code. So uh, it's not like you're stuck with this code. But once I put those variables in, um, then I want to go ahead and um, add a um, image to the map. 
and um, the reason why I was defining um, defining the variables before is because I'm going to bring those in as a variable this way um, in when I add in through the, the map dot add layer uh, method um, the first argument is the image that we're going to be working with which I defined as image earlier at the top if you remember that um, but then the second thing that I need to do is I need to put in the visual parameters and because I set that as a variable it makes it a little bit cleaner in the code um, because uh, you can just imagine if I was putting all this information here right here in the code that would be a little bit uh, cumbersome um, and then the third argument in that is going to be the um, the name of the image and so I'm just gonna call this a true color uh, image okay and let's uh, see if that if I made any mistakes there if I hit run and you can tell me if I made any mistakes seems like I did make a mistake down here um, what's going on there I don't know let's just go ahead and delete that and let's go ahead and hit run again and let's see did it work yes it worked and look at that so it added in the image if I zoom out you can see the full Landsat scene here it's uh, covering most of North Florida there and if I if I zoom in on it um, you can see that Gainesville uh, Florida is in the scene perfectly with the dot um, if I look at the uh, layers here you can see that this is the true color image that's the name that I put that's where it shows up and I have your options to see where that 4,000 and 12,000 came in so if I for example change this to 13,000 hit apply I can see that the image might change a little bit um, if I find a better looking image range that I like more um, I can go through and um, just change those visual parameters on there um, here so let's say I like 16 6,000 to 13 so I can change this here from 6 to 13 and now when I hit rerun that's now going to be the values that are set here into this true color image and so um, that's the basis of it that's how you um, search and find um, your your imagery um, so and let's just do a little quick rundown here what would we do we we searched first geographically for a place we added that point through the geometry tools once we did that we um, searched for an image collection a Landsat image collection and we defined that um, but just because we defined a whole collection image remember that's every single Landsat 8 image ever shot that's a lot of imagery we had to filter it down so first we filter it by date over here and then afterwards we filter it by geographic location then we sort it by cloud cover to get rid of all the clouds and we take the one that has the least amount of clouds um, once we do that we're going to um, uh, we, just to make sure that it all worked we print it to console so we can see what was going on but whenever we come to visualizing it seen on the screen first we do the visual parameters a true color image here bands 432 and the min and max of 6 13,000 and once we did that we used the method map.addLayer to do it